Hey guys, today we are going to look at simplifying radical expressions. We're going to answer the question, when are radicals simplified and how do I simplify numerical radicals? So a radical expression is an expression that contains this sign. We typically refer to that as the square root sign, but it's really a radical sign. And then a radicand is the expression that is under that radical sign. A part of simplifying radical expressions is recognizing perfect squares. So I have written them all out right here. You might want to take a second to pause and write those down so that you can refer to them. So let's talk about how to simplify a radical expression. So we are going to simplify numbers like this. Um, and the reason we want to do that is because when we don't have perfect squares, they're irrational numbers with decimals that go on forever with no pattern. So if we write it as a decimal, we're actually rounding it. So simplifying these radical expressions is a way to simplify it, but keep it exact instead of having to round a decimal. So basically what we're going to do is identify the perfect square factors in the radicand. We'll take the square root of that perfect square and then move them outside the radical. So if you can look at these numbers, like if you can look at 32 and know that it has a factor of four and that's your perfect square, then you can just follow this. If you have a hard time recognizing those perfect square factors though, this is going to be a method that always works and it's the method that I'm gonna go over in this video. So what you're gonna do is create a factor tree for the radicand. You're going to list out all the numbers, the prime numbers that would multiply to that number under the radical sign, kind of like you did in elementary school. Then you will identify pairs of numbers from that factor tree, which are gonna be your perfect square. These will go outside the radical as one number. That will be like taking the square root of the perfect square. And then we will leave any leftover numbers under the radical. And then we will simplify by multiplying the numbers outside the radical, which is the coefficient, and then multiplying the numbers inside the radical, which is the radicand. So we're gonna make a factor tree, look for pairs, move the pairs outside as one, and then simplify. So let's start with number one. So all I'm doing right now is I'm thinking about two numbers that multiply to 80. The first two things that come to my head are eight and 10. I'm gonna keep going until I have gotten prime numbers. So eight, two numbers that multiply to eight are two and four. There's a prime number, but four I can still break down to two and two. Okay, then 10 breaks down to two and five. So I have the prime factorization of 80. It is two times two times two times two times five. So I can write the square root of 80 as two times two times two times two times five. Okay, so I did step one, I created the factor tree. Now I am going to look for the pairs. So I see two sets of pairs here. Two times two and two times two. So this is really a perfect square because two times two is four, two times two is four. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the square root of this pair and move it outside. The square root of two times two or the square root of four is two. Square root of two times two or square root of four is two. And then I have a five left on the inside. And then I just simplify two times two is four. So square root of 80 simplifies to four square root of so let's review what we just did. I wrote out the prime factors of 80 after I did the factor tree and I got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. The pair of 2's went outside as 1 and then the 5 was left inside and then I just simplified and got 4 square root of 5. So let's try again with square root of 32. So the two numbers I think of that multiply to 32 are 16 and 2. 2 is a prime number, 16 is not, so I'm going to keep going. 16 breaks down to 4 and 4, and then 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. So there's all the prime factors. The square root of 32 is equivalent to the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, now I'm going to identify my pairs. I have a pair of 2s and a pair of 2s. So I have a two and a two outside because when they leave the radical, they exit as one. And then I have one two left on the inside. And two times two is four. 
So 4 square root of 2 is the simplified radical. Okay, let's look at number 3. 175, that breaks down into 25 and 7. 7 is a prime number, 25 is not. 25 breaks down into 5 and 5. So the square root of 175 is equivalent to 5 times 5 times 7. 5 times 5 leaves the radical as 1, so the simplified radical is 5 square root of 7. Okay, let's look at 4. I already have a coefficient, so the process is going to be the same, just whenever I get to this part, I'm already going to have a number outside the radical, and I will multiply it with whatever numbers I move outside. But we're still just going to start by simplifying 54, or breaking down 54. The two numbers I can think of that multiply to 54 are 9 and 6. 9 breaks down to 3 and 3, 6 breaks down to 2 and 2, or 2 and 3. Okay, so 2 square root of 54 is equivalent to 2 square root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I only have one pair in here of 3's, so that's going to leave outside the radical as a 1. So this will simplify to 2 times 3, square root of 2 times 3. And now I just simplify that, I multiply the numbers, and I get 6 square root of 6. Okay, number 5, same thing. Let's uh, break down this radicand first. 28, the two numbers I can think of that multiply to 28 are 7 and 4. And then 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. So negative 3 times the square root of 28 is equivalent to negative 3 square root of 2 times 2 times 7. And then there's one pair of 2's that I'll leave and it'll be negative 3 times 2 square root of 7. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Okay, 128. Um, if you are having a hard time thinking of numbers that multiply to 128, think of some of your divisibility rules. That is an even number, so I know it has to be divisible by 2. And it would be 2 times 64 that gets me to 128. And then 64 breaks down to 8 and 8. 8 breaks down to 4 and 2, and then 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. And then same with this 8, 4 and 2, and then 2 and 2. I'm going to highlight my prime numbers just because there's a lot of them. So it looks like 128, the prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So there's 7 twos. So this is going to be equivalent to... I almost forgot the 8, don't forget that original coefficient, and then 7 twos. Okay, so that means I have 1, 2, 3 pairs of 2 that will leave the radical as 1. So this is going to equal 8 times 2 times 2 times 2, square root of 2. And then 8 times 2 is 16. And then 16 times 2 times 2, 16 times 2 is 32, and 32 times 2 is 64. So this simplifies to 64 square root of 2. Okay, on 7, 8, and 9, as you can see, I have variables, but it is still the same. We're just going to write out the prime factorization, including the variable. So we'll write out that x to the 6 in expanded form and circle the pairs. First, let's just simplify or get the factor tree for 8, just like we normally would. So 8, the two numbers that multiply to 8 are 4 and 2, and then 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. So I'm just going to write the square root of 8x to the 6th in expanded form. 8 was 2 times 2 times 2, and then x to the 6th, there's 6 x's. 
Okay, now I'm going to circle the pairs. I have a pair of twos and then one, two, three pairs of x's. So I have two times x times x times x on the outside and then on the inside I'm just left with one, two. And now I'm just going to simplify this x times x times x simplifies to x to the third. Okay, number eight, same thing. Let's get the prime factorization of the number. 68 is even, so I know it's divisible by two, and it would be 34 that multiplies to 68. And then 34 simplifies to two and 17. And 17 is a prime number, so I'm done with the factor tree. Let's write this out in expanded form. It's equivalent to two times two times 17 times z, times z times z. Okay, now I'm going to circle the pairs. Those will go outside, so I get two times z square root of, and I have a 17 times z left on the inside. And then we can just simplify this to two z square root of 17 z. Okay, number nine, I have two variables, but it's still going to be the same process. I will do a factor tree with 90, and then I'll write those out in expanded form and circle the pairs. So let's start with the factor tree. 90 breaks down to nine and 10, nine breaks down to three and three, and 10 breaks down to two and five. So I'm gonna write this in expanded form. It's going to be really long, but it will help me simplify this problem. So 90 was equivalent to two times three times three times five. X to the third was equivalent to X times X times X. And then Y to the fourth was equivalent to Y times Y times Y times Y. Now I'm going to circle the pairs. There's a pair of threes, there's a pair of X's, and there's two pairs of Y's. So now those are gonna leave the radical as one. So it'll be three times x times y times y, and on the inside, I'm left with two, five, and x. And now I just simplify. So three x times y times y will simplify to three x y squared. And then two times five times x will simplify to 10 x. 